Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Well, obviously I'm over here in the United States and over here acrylic enclosures are fairly popular and there are a lot of different companies now producing acrylic enclosures, some specifically for tarantulas. And I like to post videos of some of the ones I've picked up and tried so people know what's out there. Well, every time I post one of these videos up, I get some folks from overseas that mention the fact that they don't have a lot over there as far as acrylic enclosures. And when they go to order from the United States, the shipping is kind of cost prohibitive. Well, now we have an entry in the market over there. My buddy Reinhold and his partner Michael formed Arachnosis, which is a company built by hobbyists. Reinhold I've been talking to for a couple of years now through Tom's Big Spider stuff, and he's been a hobbyist for a while. And they came up with an idea for enclosures that they are now selling overseas. So now folks overseas have another alternative if they want to check out some of these acrylic enclosures that we often get in the States. I talked to Reinhold recently and he wanted to send me a couple, so I sent him some money. He sent me a couple in the mail and my God, they're gorgeous. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna show a little bit about them. I'm gonna assemble one of them. It's gonna be a fast motion. You won't have to sit there and watch the whole thing the whole time. And then I'm going to rehouse a spider into one. I'll give my take on what I think about them. So enough of me talking, let's check out these enclosures. All right, so I've been really excited to talk about these as every time I post up a video featuring acrylic enclosures, I have folks from overseas saying that they don't have any over there. Well, that gap in the hobby over there seems to have been filled by Arachnosis. I was contacted by Reinhold a little while back asking uh, if I'd take a look at the enclosures, which I immediately found to be incredible. We worked it out, I picked up a couple. So this is the first one here. I, it's not really gonna be an unboxing. I already opened up the box because the, the main box that they came in was so beat up, probably from the US Post Office, that I wanted to make sure these were okay. So I opened the main box out, found the white boxes inside, and then I was going to wait to actually open them up on video, but I couldn't wait because I was too excited to open them up. So I kind of popped this one open ahead of time. But anyway, if we look over here, one of the things came with was a water bottle to fill up the enclosure, which is really cool. I've used to use these for football, as a matter of fact, for drinking, and thought that was really cool. And we have an envelope here with something in it. <clears throat> Hi, Tom, a special nameplate for your special tarantula, Reinhold. Aw. Oh, I have a funny feeling. I, I got an email from him alluding to this. Aw. So he made a plaque for the Gramosaur Porteri, who is the queen, who is the one that I had for 25 years that unfortunately passed away a week ago. So she's no longer with us, but this is still amazing. It could be a little commemorative plaque for her and spider with arachnosis. So thank you so much, Reinhold. That was incredibly kind of you. And unfortunately, the timing being as it was, she passed away while this was in transit. I would have loved to have put that on her enclosure for her last few days. All right, so we're going to try to open this box up and see what we have inside. I cheated already. I already looked. But as you can see, they come disassembled, which is great for shipping. One of the big issues with buying the acrylic enclosures, at least in the U.S., I know apparently shipping overseas is a little bit different, a little bit cheaper to ship around, but in the U.S., from state to state, it can be incredibly expensive shipping larger items, and a lot of times you'll find an acrylic enclosure that runs you, say, 50 bucks, but by the time you factor shipping in, you're up to around 70 or 80. So a lot of folks are starting to make the ones that, I believe it's it Zoomed, I will put comments in here in notes, but I think it's Zoomed or one of the other big pet companies that started to make ones that you assemble and a lot of people have been putting those together. So it's kind of a popular way of getting around that because you can ship these flat, which is easier and safer for shipping and you can save some money. So here are the instruction books. Now I am a geek when it comes to putting together puzzles and stuff. I was a huge Lego kid. I used to put all my GI Joe vehicles together when I was really young and I enjoy 3D puzzles now. Yes, I'm a mega geek. So I'm gonna enjoy putting this together. And what we'll do is set up a camera and kind of fast motion it to see how well it goes together. But the directions look incredibly simple. They're in both German and English, which is good because my German is not particularly great. And if we look in here, we have all the pieces. Now, full disclosure, I took this one out last night because unfortunately, again, the US Post Office beat it up quite a bit and it was a crack up here where the lock was. I do have the cement for acrylic. So what I did is went and glued that last night so that it would be hopefully hold up when we put this together. Not a big deal. This is more to put them together to kind of show them off and, and show people what they're getting. And it was not Reinhold's fault because it was packed very well, but literally the main box that these all came in looked like somebody played football with. It was unbelievable. So what we will do, we'll take a look here. Oh, one of the cool things here is one of the microfiber, I think it's called microfiber cloths, real soft cloths for cleaning these off. This is going to be awesome because I have a lot of acrylic enclosures. And if you have acrylic enclosures, one of the the downsides of them is that they can scratch easily if you have dirt and stuff on. These work great for cleaning them off without leaving any scratches. 
So lots of pieces. Can't wait to put this one together. Unfortunately, I, I just started this video and I have a plumber showing up in a minute. So I'm going to have to go work with the plumber for a bit. But when we come back, we'll set up the camera and we'll record the assembly of these. And then, you know, we might even go ahead and put a spider in it. But I bought two of them. We have the the arboreal one here that is quite large. I'm impressed with this and I'm trying to figure out what I want to put in it now. And then we have another one I'll show in a minute that is this cool terrestrial one that kind of has a sloped front so it gives you added visibility. So in a moment we'll show off this one. I will go ahead and assemble the other one off camera because we won't want the whole thing just me assembling things, swearing at it and gesticulating wildly at them. And we'll put them up here and show what they look like. Okay, so 20 minutes later about both of them put together, they went together rather easily as you saw from the fast forwarded footage of me trying to assemble a larger one. If I hadn't screwed up a couple times and kind of skipped the directions, it would have went even faster. The only thing that was a little nitpicky was those nuts and bolts in the corner. However, I prefer those nuts and bolts and I'll show those right here. There they are, that little thing goes in there. You got a, not a bolt, but a screw and then there's a nut under Let's see if I can get that. There we go. I prefer that the, to some of the other ones that you assemble yourself that have the rubber bands. I never quite dug the rubber band look. And it's a lot cleaner overall if you look at the sides. It's got the litter dam on the bottom. Now, one thing that I may do with these only because the litter dam only comes up about an inch before the screws there, maybe an inch and a half total for litter or for substrate. And normally I like to put a lot more substrate in. So what I will probably do is take some aquarium grade silicone, which is non-hazardous to the tarantulas and lay a bead in the corners, all four corners up to here and then around here to keep the moisture from getting in. So that way, if I put something in that has a little more substrate, it won't be an issue. Also, I won't have to worry about if I add water to it, it's seeping out the seams here. And that's something you could easily do. The, sil the aquarium grade silicone you can get for tubes for like 10 bucks each i just ordered one because i have to do some covers for my exoterras now here is the one of the terrestrial ones over here terrestrial sl large it's got really good floor space i'll, I'll flash up the dimensions also it's made so that if you see here the side the top is higher than the front which allows for a huge viewing area so for a terrestrial species this would be gorgeous and absolutely uh, beautiful enclosure and if you look here if you unlatch it it makes a little hole there that you can use for feeding or watering it's also the thing that you loop your finger in to open it up there are also little holes i'll point these out on the corners over here if you can see and the water little watering 
tool here. You can use that, squirt stuff right in the water dish. And I like to open things up and air them out and everything. But for people that are just trying to do a quick feed and a quick watering, that's incredibly convenient. But overall, very, very sturdy. I was kind of you know weary of some of these ones that you assemble yourself because I was worried about them not being particularly sturdy, but this one feels really well put together. Now again, same thing with the other one over here. There is a litter dam on it, which is great. So if you fill it with you know water, the water should percolate down the bottom. It should say fine in here, but I will probably take again the aquarium grade silicone, come in there, fill this gap right in there around the side to give myself room to put extra substrate in it. But they are gorgeous now. I've got the directions here and on the back of the directions, you'll see that if you buy the style up here, they're actually stackable and made so that you can use some of the bigger boreal ones next to the terrestrial cubes. That's really cool. That might be something I try out in the future because I'm a sucker for anything that's stackable. But yeah, these are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous enclosures. I love putting them together. That was a lot of fun. So for folks across the pond that are looking for acrylic enclosures, sort of like what we get over here in the States, I would definitely encourage you to check out Arachnosis. I will have their website information in the description for this so people can check it out. I might even run some footage of their website on the outro part of this video, but I would definitely encourage people to check them out. Now, again, for folks who are going to come forward and go, those are too expensive for me, I would never spend that kind of money for it. Completely understand. I'm not telling you to. It seems like people get offended when you put nice stuff up and they get mad that it costs more than they want to spend, which I, again, I get not wanting to spend a lot of money for ones. As you can see in the background, I have plenty of Sterilite containers that I still use, so I get it. But coming on to just say those are a total waste of money, for you perhaps they are, for some of us they aren't. So just wanna put that one in there because somebody's gonna come on and say it, so this way I can just kinda clip to right where the uh, point is in this video where I respond and we can move on our merry way. But there they go, oh, one more thing that I probably should mention, the ventilation in these is incredible. Lot of ventilation, the size. Now if I put substrate up to there, that's all well ventilated. And for the arboreal one here, we not only have ventilation up top, and I'm guilty of this sometimes, we forget to put some ventilation down the bottom so you get some real good circulation of air. Awesome, awesome enclosures. Very cool. Definitely, I wish they were over here because obviously it'd be a lot cheaper. There we go, the Arachnosis acrylic enclosures. Very cool, guys. Thanks so much. These are awesome. All right, so now that we have it all put together, it's time to put somebody in it, and it's been a, another two weeks. This has been sitting here. I set it up last weekend and went around trying to figure out who I wanted to put in because it's kind of a special-looking enclosure. It's going to have a special spot in my collection because I want it proudly displayed. So what we came up with is I'm going to put my G, Grandma Stola, Poker Peas in it. This one's hopefully a female. It's the brother of the one my brother Andrew has the male of. We have a mature male that's hopefully going to make little G Poker Peas babies. One of my favorite species of all time. I absolutely Absolutely love poker bees so I figured this would be a great one to put in there I'm not going to do husbandry tips on these because I did a whole husbandry video on them maybe I'll use one of those little cards up in the corner for people that want to know the husbandry for them but what we're gonna do is get this girl into this new enclosure up here now what we have is the old cork bark hide which I doubt she'll even use I glued some little thingies to it what well, I don't know fake plants we have some green moss just because I like the color of it we have some New Zealand moss, we have leaf litter, and the substrate here is a mixture of cocoa fiber and peat that I mixed up. So unfortunately I ran out of my bio dude stuff for a little while. And of course we have the old water dish. So what we are going to do here, she was sitting right on top of this here, and I thought I was gonna be able to pick her up and just place her right in there, but unfortunately she has moved. So we are gonna use the catch cup, I will say, this is one of the species I would not mind putting my hand in. There may actually been an instant recently, instance recently where I might have had one in my hand. I couldn't help it, but I normally don't handle. I just love these little guys. Don't watch her turn around, bite the brush, and completely. She's just been always Aww. so gentle, yeah. But again, temperament can vary. You can get them in a bad mood. Nope. Now we're gonna, as much as you want to be in there, we're gonna move you right back out. And again, I just. Try to practice good husbandry and good transfer practices with all of my spiders, regardless if it's a baboon species or a little H. chilensis. I always do them the same way just to practice it, but it is tempting with her because she is so adorable, so laid back. And I just have this thing with the pulcher bees where I find them to be absolutely just cute. So of course she's gonna go on a little walkabout now and probably climb up here. Now just some comments on the enclosure. The litter dam is about five centimeters or just shy of two inches. So I would probably not put something in here that needs a lot of substrate because unfortunately it's not sealed up here. But as I mentioned before, 
Billy backs up and shows here. This spot in here, I'll get this out of the way. We got about two inches, uh, five centimeters of litter dam. So anything that's moist, if you're moistening it down, as long as you're not hitting the direct e edges, it should percolate down to the bottom, keep those bottoms moist. But if you want to make sure that it stayed waterproof, you could always take some aquarium grade silicone and just hit the corners there. I did not end up doing it with this one because I am putting an arid species in it. Again, I've got about eh, probably two inches to three inches or so of substrate. I doubt she'll do any digging, but if you had a fossil oil species, I would not put one in here. But one of the cool things about this is how much surface area there is to the front of it. I mean, you look, that is a beautiful view of the spider all around, which is because of this pitch here. We have the tall part here, short part here, which gives you more surface area. Now, as far as the little water dish hole I was trying to show before, you couldn't see it. If you notice, I always open them up, but I know some people, when you're in a hurry, or maybe they got a species that they're trying not to disturb as much, you can just stick the little water dish in there, fill it right up, which I think is very convenient and pretty cool. Also, the lock mechanism, the mechanism here opens up, and that's a feeding hole. So if you're doing a bunch of feedings, you have these all lined up, you can literally just walk through, boom, squirt a little water in, drop a cricket or roach in, and you're on your merry way. But awesome enclosures. The one thing I would keep an eye on, and I haven't had any issue with it at all yet, but I'm just mentioning it, the little hinges here, if Billy can zoom in on that, those are a little small. I'm just, if, if you lean this back, it puts some pressure on it. Now this is strong plexiglass. I don't think it would pop on its own, but if I were to accidentally bump that, I'm afraid those are cracks. So that's something I'd keep an eye on, but it feels sturdy overall. That's the only small qualm I have about them. It just need, means you need to show a little caution when moving around with these. But what I was really impressed with is how sturdy they actually are. I mean, these things go together beautifully as my dogs bark. There, the dog's making an appearance finally. That would probably be Brew, who's a little nut job. But they very, very sturdy for enclosures that you actually, here I can open this up so you can get a better shot of her, for enclosures that you have to assemble yourself. Very impressed with that. So awesome enclosures. So definitely if you're overseas, feel free to check these out if you're looking for something nicer and you want to get some of those acrylic enclosures like we have over in the U.S. These are definitely something I would take a peek at. So unfortunately, because of the cost of shipping, it's really not practical for them to ship to the United States right now. It would cost you more for shipping than probably with the enclosures. As a matter of fact, I sent some money to have them sent over here, and I realized after the fact that I probably didn't even send enough to fully cover the shipping, which makes me feel terrible about it. So they are looking into finding a distributor. I hope they find one for the United States because I think hobbyists over here would find a lot to love about these enclosures. For folks over in Europe and even the UK, they do ship there, so definitely check them out if you're over there looking for acrylic enclosures. Now, for folks who are used to using glass, I'm not going to try to dissuade you to stop using glass. I know there's an argument and some been some discussion of why would you use acrylic because acrylic, some of the downsides of it is it can scratch rather easily and it can warp if it gets wet. I've had some issues, not terrible issues, but some issues with my acrylics warping. However, those of us like them for the lower weight, I mean, I, I think it's nice that they're a little lighter than some of the glass enclosures and there's a little more you can do with them aesthetically because the acrylic can be drilled and manipulated in ways that glass can't. But to each their own, I'm not trying to tell people you should buy acrylics because I think some people get offended like well, why wouldn't you just use glass we just don't have as much glass stuff available available in the United States as apparently you do overseas and for those who are interested I'll obviously be including a link in the description so you can go down there click that check out the website and obviously I have some running over here but I encourage you guys that you know are looking for those acrylic enclosures or overseas check it out give a look they've got a beautiful gallery up with my buddy Adam Guest has some of his photos of his own collection in them with some beautiful lighting you can see just how beautiful these enclosures can be for display so again not trying to convince people to pick them up if you're not into acrylics but for those of you who are looking for acrylics this is a great place to start all right so that will do it for this one as always if you liked it enough to subscribe very much appreciate you click the little circle up there if you want to check out some more videos see what i'm about you can find them over here love getting comments feel free to comment if you comment i will respond just know it might take me a little while because i tend to get a few comments that'll do it for this one guys stay safe we'll catch you all next time